On day one, I spawned in as a warden. Why am I covered in blood and why can I see? I was in an ancient city standing in a pool of blood and surrounded by warden corpses. Ah! Why are all my people dead? I looked over and saw a scary looking figure kill the last living warden. Soon there will be no one strong enough to stop me. Once I have absorbed all worthy souls, this world will belong to me, Bloody Herobrine. Why would you do this? You killed my family. Ah, uh, Blood Warden. You're not even worth absorbing right now. Don't worry, though. I'll come back and make sure you join the rest of your family. Bloody Hero Brian started to levitate, and with a huge burst of power, he vanished. I wanted to fight him, but I knew I was too weak to hurt him. I decided to leave the ancient city, vowing to get my revenge on Bloody Hero Brian. On day two, I made it out of the ancient city, still upset over the loss of my family. I walked out of the cave, and everything was so bright. The sunlight started to burn my eyes. Ah! Why does this hurt so much? Because of this, I was filled with so much rage. I heard voices and there was a village nearby. I ran into the village and made it to the center destroying everything in my path. What is that? A red bloody warden! I jumped at the villager and killed him. I was still mad and hungry, so I rampaged around the village and destroyed everything. I killed every villager that was there, devouring them one by one. My eyes started to adjust to the sunlight, and I saw the chaos that I started. What's wrong with me? I was so disgusted with myself for doing this. The villagers were all gone. I'm, I'm a monster. I ran out of the village, ashamed of what I've done. I should get out of here fast. On day three, I was a safe distance from the village and decided to stop running. I made it into a forest and decided to collect resources and supply myself with tools. I destroyed some of the trees in the forest and collected enough wood to make a wooden pickaxe and crafting table. I still didn't feel like I was far enough away from civilization, so I left and continued my journey. I knew that right now, I was in danger to myself and those around me. Eventually, I came across a mountain that had a cave opening inside. I went inside and there was nobody around. I used my wooden pickaxe and collected and enough stone to make a stone pickaxe. I then used that to get more stone. I had enough of the material and used that and the wood I had left over to build myself a home right outside of the cave. After building my home, I collected more wood from trees. But man, all of this is making me so hungry. Maybe I should go find some more villagers to feast upon? No, I couldn't believe I was thinking that. I'm not a monster, or am I? I ran back into my base and went inside my house to go get rest. Maybe I could sleep this desire for flesh off. I woke up feeling so much more refreshed. Suddenly, I heard a scream for help and rushed out of the base. I followed the scream and found a skeleton being chased by a pack of wolves. Ah, leave me alone! Leave me alone! The wolves cornered the skeleton and were about to kill him until I jumped in front, blocking the wolves' path. They were shocked by my appearance. I roared at them to leave the skeleton alone, easily scaring them off. Wow, uh, thank you? Y you aren't gonna kill me, are you? Of course not. I told the skeleton not to mention it and began to walk away, but he stopped me. He wanted to come with me for protection. I, uh, prefer to be alone. Great, so you're just gonna reject me like the rest of my family. I stopped walking away and listened to the skeleton. Skeleton. He introduced himself as Rattles, and he told me that he had nowhere else to go. His family told him to get lost because he was useless to them. He then told me because he was a skeleton without a bow, he was practically useless. I felt bad for Rattles because I also didn't have my family. I finally gave in and told him that he could come along. He was very excited, and we made our way back to base. On day five, on our way back, we were suddenly stopped by bloody Hero Brine. So this is where you were hiding. You still look just as weak as before. I was enraged from seeing him and charged at him, but he teleported away and teleported behind me. You fool. You will never stand a chance against me without the blood items. Blood items? What are you talking about? He told me that there are powerful blood items that were able to be crafted throughout the world. You don't know it yet, but you are the final piece of the puzzle, Warden. I told Bloody Hero Brian that he was gonna pay for what he's done, but he just laughed at me and teleported away. Is he gone? Uh, yeah, he's gone. Rattles seemed relieved. Final piece to the puzzle? What is that supposed to mean? Rattles told me that Hero Brian has been going around the world, killing everyone and absorbing their essence in order to be the strongest there was. I told him that I was gonna make sure to stop Hero Brian and get rid of him for everyone's sake. Rattles is happy to hear that, and we went 
went back to base. Using the wood and stones I had left over, I built Rattles a small house next to mine. Rattles thanked me for building him a home. Of course, Rattles. I then went inside my house to think about what Bloody Herobrine was talking about earlier. Blood items, huh? I knew that if I collected them, they would help me with my revenge. I need to find them to get stronger. I wanted to find the blood items, but I didn't know where to look. I went inside of Rattles' house and asked him if he knew anything. I've never heard of blood items, but if you want to know anything blood-related, then you need to see Ravana, the blood witch. He told me that the witch lived in the swamps, not far from here. I collected more stone and crafted myself a stone sword to defend myself. After that, I left my base and made my way into the swamps in search of Ravana. As I made my way through the swamp, I encountered a large group of spiders who were covered in blood. Lordy Hero Brian has sent us to check on your progress, but I think we should just kill you now. These guys must work for him. I charge at the spiders and try to stab them with my stone sword. One of them easily dodged it and bit me with its poisonous fangs. I grew extremely weak from the poison and lost half of my hearts in the process. I was frustrated that I still wasn't strong enough, but I refused to let them kill me. Suddenly, an inner rage filled me again and my vision went dull. Uh, what happened? My vision slowly came back to me, only to reveal that all the spiders were dead. It's clear that when I get angry, my rage blinds me. Anyways, with those things gone, I think it's time to go find this so-called witch. On day seven, I finally came across a hut in the swamps. There was a witch standing outside, and she was covered in blood. You must be the blood warden I've heard rumors about. I'm impressed that you've made it this far, despite how weak you you seem to be. I got angry about her comment, and you must be Ravana, the Blood Witch. I just took down some of Bloody Herobrine's minions for your information. Ravana <laughs> laughed at me and told me that Bloody Herobrine's minions are nothing compared to him. I told her that I would destroy Bloody Herobrine once I get the blood items. Ravana seemed like she wanted to help. She handed me a potion and told me that this would make me stronger. I drank it, and I suddenly grew into a full-sized warden. I even gained 10 more hearts. Now that you're a full-sized warden, you should be able to use a warded sonic boom to defend yourself. We went inside of her hut, and Ravana dropped a recipe book in front of me. To defeat Bloody Herobrine, you will need to follow this recipe book that can make the blood items that will defeat him. The blood armor, the blood sword, and the blood held him. Ravana told me that if I was able to find these pieces, she would gladly make them for us. This was great. I was that much closer to killing bloody Herobrine and taking my revenge. I left Ravana's hut and began following the recipe to create the first of the blood items, the blood armor. In order for me to craft this armor, you will need to obtain a set of iron armor as well as the blood essence of a powerful spirit. Ravana told me that it was better for me to get the iron set first before facing this so-called powerful spirit. I guess it's really strong. As I continued through the swamp, I happened to come across a cave and went inside to find that it had some iron ores inside of it. I used my stone pickaxe and started mining the ores, collecting enough of it to craft a new set of iron tools. Using my newly crafted iron pickaxe, I mined all of the iron inside of the cave and was able to craft myself an iron chest plate. I left the cave and made my way out of the swamps when suddenly I could hear the sound of people screaming. I wanted to continue my journey and find more iron, but the screams started to get louder. I decided to take a detour from my journey and ran toward the screams. On days 9 to 10, I followed the screams to a town that was completely destroyed. Who could have done this? I made my way to the center and saw bloody Herobrine was there, and he was attacking a group of players. Die, you peasants! I shouted at bloody Herobrine, and he turned around. The blood warden. It looks like you've gotten a little stronger. How about we test how strong you are? Bloody Herobrine flew down towards me, and I quickly dodged him. I used my sonic boom on him, but he was completely unaffected. He then knocked me away with an attack, greatly damaging me. You are nowhere near strong enough for me to even consider defeating you. Get stronger and convince me otherwise. Like I said, once powerful enough, your power will serve me greatly. So long, Blood War. I helplessly watched as Bloody Herobrine flew off and left the town. I was angry at how easily Bloody Herobrine beat me. Man, I weakly left the town and made my way back to base.
I barely made it inside of the base when Rattle saw me and ran to help me. What happened to you? It looks like you got run over by a mountain. I told Rattles that I ran into Bloody Herobrine again, and he did this to me. He was getting more powerful by the minute. I don't even know what he's gonna do once he reaches his full potential. I was getting hungry again, and my desire for human flesh started to come back to me. I'm hungry too, but I refuse to eat human flesh, and I know that deep down, you don't want to either. Rattles was right. I didn't want to kill any more villagers. But I didn't know what else to eat. Rattle suggested that I would build a farm. I used the iron that I left over and crafted a bucket and built the farm next to my base. Soon, I'll have a new source of food instead of killing people for it. I then pulled out the recipe book and looked into the details on finding the powerful spirit the witch told me about. The book said the easiest way to find her was by following her footprints, and her last known sighting was in the plains. Rattles came back with a herd of chickens, and we killed a few of them off. We then cooked the meat to fill our bed. Oh, that was delicious. Now that my strength was restored, I left base and began my journey to find the so-called powerful spirit. On days 13 to 14, I made it to the plains in search of the spirit. But where could it be? Suddenly, I heard the sound of thunder and the ground started to shake around me. What the heck was that? I looked around but didn't see anything, so I continued my search. I walked around the plains and came across giant holes on the ground. Wait, are these the footprints? Why were they so huge? A large fog started to roll, and a booming voice spoke to me. Who dares enter my domain? The figure appeared out of the fog, and I quickly realized that the blood essence I needed to obtain wasn't just a spirit, but was Giant Alex. Giant Alex roared at me and sent me flying across the plains. Ouch. Okay, that hurt. I slowly got up, and Giant Alex came at me for another attack. I quickly moved out of the way and watched her destroy a tree like it was nothing. I charged her and tried slicing her with my stone sword. Giant Alex didn't take any damage and knocked me away again. I started to grow angry from this and used a sonic boom on her. It seemed to damage her because she screamed in pain. Giant Alex tried to attack me again, but I dodged them and constantly hit her with my sonic boom. I used the sonic boom one last time on her and defeated Giant Alex. She left behind something and it was her blood essence. I collected the essence and started to leave the plains. Now that I had Giant Alex's blood essence, I need to complete the rest of my armor so that Ravana could craft the blood armor. I saw a cave nearby and decided to venture inside. The cave was full of iron, and I used my iron pickaxe and began mining. I collected enough iron to finally complete my armor set. Now, I could finally get the blood armor. I was about to leave the cave when someone told me to wait. I turned around and saw a group of zombies, and it looked very frightened. I asked them what they were doing inside of the cave, and they told me that they were hiding from Bloody Herobrine. He attacked us. We hide in cave, but we want to go home. We waited for it to turn into nighttime, and we left to go find the zombie's house. The zombies led me to a cave that led underground and away from the sun. We went inside and found no survivors. The other zombies were upset to see that their people were killed off, all because of Herobrine's greed for power. I offered the zombies to stay at my base, but they just wanted to be left alone. I agreed to their wishes and started to leave, but the zombies asked me to seal off the cave entrance so that no one would bother them anymore. I made it out of the cave and used my sonic boom to destroy the entrance. Buddy Herobrine is gonna pay for doing that to them and all of the mobs he has terrorized. On day 17 to 18, 18, I made my way into the swamps and returned to Ravana's hut. I'm surprised that you were able to actually obtain giant Alex's blood essence. I might have underestimated you, young warden. Thanks for the load of confidence. I gave Ravana the blood essence and my full iron set. She then placed the items into her cauldron and combined them to create my first blood item, the blood armor. Once I equipped the armor, I could feel myself getting stronger. I even gained an additional five hearts. Your sonic boom should be more powerful now thanks to the armor. The more you upgrade yourself, so too shall the armor. This was great. If I'm already this strong, who knows how strong I'll be once I retrieve the other blood items. I thanked Ravana for making the blood armor for me. She told me that it was no problem, but warned me to be careful when finding the rest of the ingredients. The stronger you become, the more bloody Herobrine will notice you. You cannot defeat him without the other blood items. 
I told Ravana that I understood and left the hut to return to base. Once I arrived, I saw that the farm was now full of wheat. I also noticed that cows were now part of the farm too. Looks like Rattles was hard at work. With this and the wheat, we have our own source of food. I thanked Rattles for his hard work and collected some of the wheat to bake some bread for us. I gave Rattles a piece of the bread and told him that his family was wrong about him. You're not as useless as they say you are. Rattles thanked me and I decided to use the resources that I had left over to upgrade the base. Now that I've gotten bigger, I needed a bigger place to live. I used a leftover stone and iron to build a bigger home for myself. After I finished upgrading, I went inside of my house when Rattles walked inside. It's good to see that you've gotten stronger in your quest for the blood items. I think you might be able to defeat Bloody Hero Brian if you keep this up. I thanked Rattles for his support and I told him that I was gonna beat Bloody Hero Brian and avenge all of the mobs that he's killed. I knew that if I wanted to do that, I needed to find the ingredients for the other blood items first. I opened the recipe book and the next item on the list was the blood sword. The book told me that in order to craft it, I would need blood crystals and a bloody hilt. Great. Looks like I know what I need to find next. On days 21 to 23, I left the base and followed the recipe book's instructions to finding the blood crystal. The book told me that the blood crystal was located inside of a blood temple. Once I retrieve it, I'll be one step closer to making the blood sword. As I continued my journey, I got stopped by a group of creepers and they were all covered in blood. Bloody Herobrine has sent us to see if you're worthy of being absorbed. That monster is still playing around me like I'm some weakling. Well, I'm not as weak as I used to be. One of the creepers charged and blew itself up in front of me. The other creepers laughed, thinking they had me defeated. It looks like this blood armor really knew how to take damage. I barely felt anything. I quickly took down one of the creepers with my iron sword. Before the other creepers could react, I used my upgraded sonic boom to kill most of them off. There was one creeper left, but he ran away. I decided to let him go. I had more pressing matters to deal with, like finding the blood temple. Oh, you've returned. I guess the Blood Warden is still too weak. It's actually the opposite, sir. The Blood Warden is starting to get more powerful. <sighs> this is fantastic news. Keep getting stronger, Blood Warden. It'll be all the more satisfying to absorb you. I made it to the blood temple, and when I reached the entrance, I could tell that it gave off dark vibes and continued to go deeper into the blood temple. I eventually made it inside of a large room, and there was a pedestal holding the blood crystal. Yes, I walked towards the crystal, but a golem stepped out and blocked my path. Are you here to take the blood crystal? I told the golem that I was. I will not let a servant of Bloody Herobrine take it. I told the golem that I didn't serve Bloody Herobrine, but I'm trying to get rid of him. I wanted vengeance for what Bloody Herobrine Brian did to my family. The golem calmed down and told me that he wanted to get revenge too. If you want this crystal and free my village from what the players have done to it, I would do it myself, but I must guard this crystal. I agreed to the golem's deal and I left the temple in search of the golem's village. On days 27 to 29, I began my journey in finding the blood golems. I made my way through a clearing when suddenly the world started to shake around me. Bloody hero Brian appeared floating over me and I can tell that he'd gotten stronger than the last time I encountered him. Blood Warden, I've heard good things about you. You've gotten stronger, haven't you? He must have heard it from the Creeper. I guess Ravana was right about him. Being interested in me, the more I got stronger. Bloody Hero Brian teleported in front of me, and I immediately jumped back. It looks like you even found a blood item. Let's see how strong that armor of yours really is. He then punched me and sent me flying across the area. Ow! He tried to punch me again, but I don't his attack and hit him with my upgraded sonic boom but he just laughed it off <laughs> You call that a sonic boom? I knew that I couldn't defeat Bloody Hero Brian now, so I decided to make a run for it. He floated up and threw red lightning at me while I was running away. He cornered me at the edge of the cliff. I didn't think there was a way to escape him. Nowhere to run now, Blood Warden. Maybe it's time to absorb you after all. I looked down at the cliff, and just as Bloody Hero Brian tried to hit me with his lightning, I jumped. I landed at the bottom and felt embarrassed. Man, I can't even put up a fight. I looked around my surroundings and figured that I should get out of here quick. I came across a mine and decided to go inside to see if there were any resources that I could collect. Once inside, I found that the cave had some diamond ores. I used my iron pickaxe and collected all the diamonds that were inside. I then collected enough diamonds to craft myself a diamond pickaxe and a diamond helmet, but something strange happened. The moment I equipped it, the diamond helmet changed into a blood helmet. 
the more you upgrade yourself, so too shall the armor. Ravana was right. Eventually, I'll be able to upgrade all of my armor and make it stronger with better materials. I made my way out of the mine and found a village nearby. I asked one of the villagers if they knew anything about the Blood Golem's village. The villager told me that he did and said that the Golem's village was located in a desert not far from here. I thanked the villager for his help and headed for the Golem's village. On days 33 to 35, I made my way through the desert and eventually found the Blood Golem's village. But I wasn't prepared for what I was about to see see there were iron golem farms all over the village and players were just standing there collecting the iron from the chest please you can't do this ah! we can do whatever we want <laughs> i was filled with so much rage you will pay for this i ran into the village and the players were scared of my appearance ah a monster i slaughtered the players one by one killing each and every one of them and devouring their flesh once all the players were killed i finally came back to my senses and realized that I let my rage take over again. I wasn't happy that it happened, but deep down, I knew that getting rid of those players was the right decision. I released the iron golems from their farms and freed the villagers from their cages. They were all so excited and thanked me for freeing them. One of the iron golems came up to me. You must be a friend of the blood golem. Take this and tell the blood golem that his village is safe. The iron golem dropped me a blood sapling and told me that the blood golem would know what to do with it. I thanked him and made my way back to the blood temple. I returned and told the blood golem that I saved his village. Thank you for saving my village. The players deserved whatever punishment you gave them. I told the blood golem that one of the iron golems gave me a blood sapling and I showed it to him. You must have gotten this from my friend. The blood golem told me that he and his iron golem friend used to be protectors of their village before the players came and took it over. The sapling was very important to him and he asked the iron golem to protect it from anyone he didn't trust. Well, if this was important to you and your friend, then you can have it. No, that sapling will be very useful to you in the future. As promised, the blood crystal is yours. The blood golem handed me the blood crystal, and I thanked him for his help. He then also told me that he would help me out in the future if I ever needed him. I just might take you up on that offer. I left the blood temple and headed for Ravana's hut. On days 39 to 41, I made it outside of Ravana's hut and called out to her, letting her know that I had had returned. Ravana came out and was pleased to see me. Young Blood Warden, have you collected the blood crystal? I handed her the blood crystal and she told me to take down one of the swamp trees and collect the wood. I did as she asked. Ravana told me to craft a stick and after I did, I gave it to her. She told me she would be right back and entered back into her hut. Large flashes of light can be seen inside of her hut and then there was an explosion. Ravana, is everything all right? Ravana came back out of her hut and revealed to me the blood Blood sword. This sword is stronger than any other material you could obtain in this world. Use it wisely. I thanked her for crafting the sword and was about to leave when she stopped me. Be careful, young Blood Warden. You are reaching the point that Bloody Herobrine will want to absorb you. Once you reach that point, he will stop at nothing to get you. I told her that I would keep that in mind and made my way back to my base. As I was getting closer to the base, I could hear the sound of explosions explosions and rattle screams. Ah, somebody help me! Where is the Blood Warden? You insect, I know that he lives here. I ran to find my base completely destroyed. Rattles was running away from bloody Hero Brian. Pick on someone your own size. Warden, I know you've gotten stronger. Show me why I should absorb you. I told Rattles to go find somewhere to hide and began to fight against Bloody Hero Brian. I used my Sonic Boom to knock him back to the ground. He seemed stunned for a moment. Is that all you've got? Bloody Hero Brian punched me and sent me flying to the other side of base. He started floating up in the air and hit me with some of his lightning. Ah, I was in so much pain. I could barely stay standing. Pathetic. Even after all this time, including your blood upgrades, you're still not worthy. Bloody Hero Brian teleported out of the base. I started to pass out.
On days 45 to 47, I finally woke up to the sound of rattles. Warden, please wake up. Oh, I'm awake. He was so relieved to see that I was okay. I'm so sorry about the base. Bloody Herobrine came out of nowhere and messed the whole place up. I told him not to worry about it and reassured him that I was going to defeat him in no time. But first, we needed to rebuild our home. I ventured out of the base and used my diamond tools to collect as much wood and stone that I could collect. I returned and rebuilt the farm while Rattles came back with more chickens and cows. I used the stone that I collected to make bigger and better versions of mine and Rattles' houses. There. Now the base is back to what it once was, but better. Rattles still looked upset, and I asked him what was bothering him. I'm still useless. I couldn't even fight back against Bloody Herobrine. What am I supposed to do if the base is in danger again? Actually, I might have a solution to that. I found a nice area in the base and planted the blood sapling. I told Rattles to wait and left the base. I ventured throughout the world and eventually came across a cave and went inside of it. The cave was full of diamonds. I used my diamond pickaxe to mine enough diamonds to complete my diamond armor set. Just like the diamond helmet, the moment that I equipped the rest of the armor, it immediately changed into the blood versions. I felt my blood powers growing and I noticed that I gained five more hearts thanks to the armor upgrades. I went deeper into the cave and saw spiders dwelling inside of it. Perfect. Using my blood sword, I I quickly killed the spiders and collected the strings that they left behind. I left the cave and returned to base to find Rattles in a panic. The sapling, it, it grew into a huge tree. Perfect. We went over to where I planted the tree and it finally grew into a large blood tree. I used my ax and cut down the blood tree to collect its wood. I then used the string that I got from the spiders and crafted the materials together to make a bloody bow. Here, now you have something to defend yourself with. This is for me? Thanks, Blood Warden. This really means a lot. I told Rattles that it was no problem and opened the recipe book to look up the next blood item. On days 51 to 53, I started my journey in finding the next blood item, the blood totem. I opened the recipe book and it said that I needed to acquire an enchanted totem inside. I could find it in a woodland mansion. The recipe book then said that the totem was being guarded by a crazy evoker who was much stronger than anything else that I fought before. This was going to be the hardest task in the book so far, but I was prepared for whatever came my way. It started to get darker, so I decided to stop briefly and built a small camp to rest. I ate some bread when I suddenly heard the sound of footsteps. Then out of nowhere, a group of Endermen teleported in front of me. They were covered in blood, which only meant one thing. They worked for Bloody Hero Brian. The only thing that you've come to do is die. I quickly pulled out my blood sword and took down one of the Endermen. The other Endermen teleported in different places is trying to distract me. I calmly stood still and waited for the Endermen to show themselves. You idiots must have forgotten one thing about Wardens. The Enderman teleported in front of me and I immediately cut him down. We have great hearing. The last Enderman was shocked and I used my Sonic Boom to defeat him. Thanks for the warm-up, guys. Now I'm ready to find that totem. I continued my journey to find the totem and eventually came across a forest covered in blood. This must have been the blood forest that the rest recipe book mentioned. I made my way to the center of it and came upon a woodland mansion. I went inside the mansion and there was the enchanted totem, but right next to it was the evoker. He introduced himself as Seven and he told me that he was related to the other blood entities. Then you know why I'm here. I need that totem that you're guarding so that I can use it to defeat Hero Brine. I don't care about your stupid quest, you fool. I only care about me and me alone. Wow, talk about egotistical. Well, guess I've got no other choice but to fight you. We began our battle, and Seven summoned Fang to try and harm me. I dodged the attack and used my Sonic Boom to knock Seven aside. I charged at the Evoker, but he kept summoning Fangs. I moved back and realized that I didn't take too much damage thanks to my armor upgrades. Seven then summoned Vexes, but I quickly took them down using my Blood Sword. Impossible! How can this be? I charged at Seven and used the sword to finally take him down. The Evoker left behind the enchanted totem and I collected it and left the woodland mansion. On days 57 to 59, I made my way out of the blood forest and returned to Ravana's hut. So, you were able to beat that crazy evoker and collect the totem. Good work, young blood warden. I gave Ravana the enchanted totem and asked her if she would be able to turn it into a blood totem. The witch told me that she couldn't do it. Wait, what? What do you mean you can't change the totem? The last thing 
thing you need to do to make the blood totem is dip it into the pool of blood deep in the blood dimension. The blood dimension? Ravana told me that the blood dimension was a place that was full of blood, and it was originally where Bloody Herobrine came from. Well, where do I find this blood dimension? You will need to find a blood portal, and lucky for you, your skeleton friend might know where to find one. Rattles? How would he know? Ravana told me to trust her and ask Rattles about it. I hesitated Hesitantly agreed and made my way back to base. I returned, and just when I was about to walk inside, an arrow came flying towards me. I quickly dodged the arrow. Rattles! It's me! Oh, uh, sorry, Blood Warden. I thought Bloody Hero Brian came back to cause trouble again. If this is how you greet your friends, I don't want to know how you greet your enemies. Rattles apologized and told me that it wouldn't happen again. I didn't know about that, but I asked him if he knew where the blood portal was located. Blood portal? Oh, you must be talking about the strange portal that I found in the mountains. Rattles told me that when he went to the top of a mountain, he came across a red ancient portal. Out of curiosity, I went inside the portal and I saw a world that was completely covered in blood. It was really creepy if you ask me. That's where I lost my bow. I asked him if he knew and how he got there and he told me that he did. The two of us ate some cooked chicken to build up our strength and left to go find the blood portal. On days 63 to 65, Rattles and I made our way across a mountainous area in search of the blood portal. There, it should be at the top of that mountain. Rattles pointed to the top of a very large mountain, and we made our way towards it. Once we got to the mountain, laughter could be heard, and we looked around to see who it was. Suddenly, bloody hero Brian appeared above. <laughs> Poor little warden. Are you trying to make a blood item to beat me? Laugh all you want, you lunatic. Once I go to the blood dimension and make the blood totem, you're going down. <laughs> you will never make it to my home, warden. You have no idea, but you're doing everything as I planned. I pushed Rattles out of the way, and Bloody Herobrine hit us with the bolt of his red lightning. I didn't take much damage, and he was surprised by this. I used my sonic boom to bring him down to the ground. I then used my blood sword on him, and it seemed to damage him a little bit. Bloody Herobrine seemed weirdly happy about this, and knocked me away. He then grabbed Rattles, and teleported the two of them out of here. No! I wanted to go and search for my friend, but I knew if I wanted to end Bloody Herobrine's madness, I I needed to make the blood totem. I made my way up the mountain and continued my search. I finally made my way to the top of the mountain in search of the blood portal. I went to the center and came across a strange looking structure. There were skeletons around it and it looked like it was covered in blood. This has to be the blood portal. There was red obsidian around it and I wasn't sure how it was going to light it. I opened the recipe book to see if there was any information, but it didn't say anything. Rage started to fill my body and I was so frustrated. Frustrated. I found the portal to the blood dimension, but this book didn't tell me how to activate it. To top it all off, my friend has been captured by Bloody Herobrine, and who knows what he's gonna do to him? Is this it? Am I supposed to just give up? Suddenly, I could hear footsteps, and the blood golem was there. I knew you would be looking for the blood portal. I'm glad that I made it here to help. He told me that he could activate the portal by using his blood essence. Oh my goodness, thank you so much. The blood golem used his blood essence to activate the blood portal. This is amazing. Now, I'm one step closer to defeating Herobrine. On day 69 to 71, I prepared myself to enter the blood dimension. Be careful, Blood Warden. The blood essence is at its strongest in the blood dimension. You may find it hard to hold your inner rage. I thanked the Blood Golem for the warning and went through the portal. I was inside the blood dimension. Wow, no kidding. The world was completely covered in blood. Suddenly, rage started to fill my body and I was starting to freak out. Ah, what is what is this? This must have been the blood essence that the blood golem mentioned earlier. Okay, control my rage. Control it. I ventured throughout the dimension and eventually came across a pool filled with blood. I took out the totem and walked inside of it. After a minute, I walked out of the blood pool and came out with the blood totem. I can feel myself getting stronger. Now, I can go and take down Herobrine. Suddenly, a vision popped in my head and I started to black out. Out. When I woke up, I found myself in a strange castle. Where was I? I walked throughout it until I found a pool of lava and rattles. He was dangling above the lava. Bloody Herobrine was there too. Please get me down from here. Sure, I'll let you down right into lava. No! 
I was back in the blood dimension. Rattles is in trouble, but I knew where he was now. I quickly left the blood dimension and began my journey to save my friend. I made my way throughout the world until I finally reached the castle where Rattles was being held. Don't worry, buddy. I'm gonna get you out of here. I noticed that the castle was being guarded by some of Bloody Herobrine's henchmen. I couldn't afford to cause a commotion, so I snuck past them and quietly made my way through the castle. I eventually found where Rattles was being held. Blood Warden! Shh! Do you want the entire castle to know that I'm here? Rattles apologized, and I quickly freed him. I looked around to see where Bloody Herobrine was, and Rattles told me that he had disappeared after he finished hurting him. The two of us made our way to the exit, but Bloody Herobrine teleported in front of me. Now that I have the blood totem, I told Bloody Herobrine that I was ready to end him. <laughs> You fool! I wanted you to create that blood totem. Now I can fight an even stronger blood warden and absorb all your power. Bloody Herobrine began his assault on us, and Rattles and I quickly dodged his red lightning. Thanks to the blood totem, I had a stronger sonic boom and used it to knock Bloody Herobrine to the ground. Bloody Herobrine teleported behind me to attack, but Rattles shot him with an arrow from his bloody bow. Thank you, Rattles, but that only made Bloody Herobrine angrier. He summoned lightning all around the area and greatly wounded me. Bloody Herobrine was about to hit me with another bolt, but Rattles got in the way and took the hit. It. Rattles! No! I ran over to my friend and knew that he was dying. You've got to get out of here. <laughs> it's too late for me. You need to leave, Blood Warden. Defeat Bloody Hero Brian. Not just for yourself, but for everyone. My friend died in front of me. No! He left behind his bloody bow. I collected the bow and ran out of the castle as fast as I could. Run all you want, Blood Warden. Your days are numbered. On days 75 to 77, I sadly returned to the base where the Blood Golem was waiting for me. Blood Warden, it's good to see that you're safe. Where is your skeleton friend? I pulled out Rattles' bow and showed it to the Golem, revealing to him that Rattles was gone. The Blood Golem told me that he was sorry for what happened, but knew that I was going to avenge my friend. I agreed with him and used the resources that I had left over to build a grave for Rattles and honored him. I'm sorry, Rattles. I wish I could have been stronger to stop Hero. I promise. I'll make him pay for what he's done. I decided to build a house for the blood golem to stay in, and the blood golem thanked me. I thanked him for helping me get inside of the blood dimension and helping me along my journey. I'm only returning the favor after you saved my village from those players, but I promise to be by your side till the end. I decided to go to my house and rest for the night. I woke up from my slumber and decided that it would be best to return to Ravana. I should tell her that I acquired the blood totem. I made my way through the swamps and reached her hut. The witch came out and was glad to see that I was safe. It looks like you have all the blood items, but you seem troubled, young blood warden. I told Ravana about what happened in regards to the blood totem, and I also told her about rattles. I should have been able to take down bloody hero Brian, but I wasn't, and now my friend's gone because of it. What's going on, Ravana? What am I missing? You are not yet ready to fight bloody hero Brian. There is still one more thing you need that the recipe book does not mention. The witch handed me a strange lantern, and I asked her what I would do with it. Take this soul lantern and go back to where it all started for you. Only then will you find your answers. The place where it all started? Oh, that place. I knew what Ravana was talking about and made my way back to the ancient city. On days 81 to 85, I finally made my way back to the city and looked at all of the destruction that Bloody Herobrine had caused all of those days ago. Memories of watching my people get killed by him started to flood my mind and all I can feel was sadness. I walked through the city and the bodies of my warden brethren were still laying there. This wasn't the city that I was born in anymore. It was just a graveyard for all of my species that came before me. Suddenly, I felt a strange power, and I pulled out the soul lantern to resonate with it. Rattles was there, and behind him were the ghosts of the wardens that Bloody Herobrine killed. Rattles, it's so good to see you. Hello, old friend. I asked him what he was doing here, and Rattles told me that he was here to calm me down from my rage. To calm me down from my rage? Are you kidding? I can't just let that go. After everything Herobrine's done to me, and even to you, how can I let go of my rage? You're not 
not fighting Bloody Hero Brian for the sake of vengeance. You're fighting Bloody Hero Brian for the sake of justice. Those words started to resonate with my body. And I finally decided to listen to Rattles. I needed to let go and accept that my friends and family were gone. Rattles told me to give him the bloody bow. I pulled it out and all of the wardens behind Rattles disappeared and were absorbed into the bow to become something new. Rattles handed me back the bow and I gained five more hearts thanks to the upgrade. Now, you'll never be alone. Good luck, Blood Warden. Thank you, old friend. I'm going to end this nightmare for everyone. I exited the ancient city and spotted a cloud of smoke in the distance. That's probably not good. I ran over to the source of the smoke and saw that a village was under attack by Bloody Herobrine's minions. The village was in complete disarray as the blood minions were destroying everything in their path. A blood creeper was about to blow up some villagers, but I used my new enchanted bow to take him down. The minions stopped their attack and turned their attention to me. It's the Blood Warden! Give him for the sake of Bloody Herobrine! They all came charging at me, but I used my Sonic Boom to take down a few of them. A Blood Enderman teleported behind me, but then I used my sword to slice him into pieces. The rest of the minions were too scared to fight me, and they ran away from the village. The villagers slowly walked up to me, and I was concerned that they would call me a monster. Instead, they praised me for saving them. I was glad that the villagers no longer saw me as a monster. Monster, but instead, a hero. I made my way back to base to finally prepare for my final battle. On days 91 and 94, I returned to base and Ravana was there with the blood golem. Young blood warden, did you find what you were looking for? I told her that I did and I thanked her for helping me. Thanks to that, I'm now more than ready to take on Herobrine. Now that you've acquired all the blood items and have gotten stronger, bloody Herobrine won't rest until he absorbs you. Well, he doesn't have to worry about that because I'm going to him. I told Ravana and the blood golem that I planned on storming blood Herobrine place and taking him down once and for all. You need to be careful, young blood warden. Bloody Herobrine's forces are not to be taken lightly. Neither should I. The Blood Golem told me that if I needed his assistance with raiding the castle, I can count on him. I thanked him for his help and told him that I would greatly appreciate it. Ravana wished us luck as the Blood Golem and I left the base and made our way to Blood Hero Brian's castle. We arrived at his castle and his army of blood minions were waiting for us. Let's do this, Blood Warden. With pleasure. The two of us charged in and began our fight with the minions. The Blood Golem was pretty strong because he easily took down spiders left and right. I used my enchanted bow and started killing off the blood creepers one by one. A blood enderman tried to sneak attack the golem, but I used my sonic boom to take him down. The blood golem thanked me and we continued our battle. I used my blood sword to take down the blood spiders that were blocking the entrance. The blood golem smashed down the blood enderman and most of Herobrine's minions were defeated thanks to the two of us. Go and deal with bloody Herobrine. I can take care of the rest of his army. I thanked the blood golem and charged inside of the castle looking for bloody Herobrine. On day 100, I ran throughout the castle looking for him. Where are you? I eventually found him in an open area of the castle. He then started to summon a lightning storm inside. It looks like he was making sure I couldn't escape. Oh, don't worry. I'm not going anywhere. One of us is going down today, and that's gonna be you. You finally become strong enough to be absorbed. Prepare yourself, Blood Warden, for today is the day you die! Blood Hero Brian shot red lightning at me, but I dodged it and used my enchanted bow to shoot him down with some arrows. He shook off the arrows and teleported behind me. Then he knocked me into a wall. Ah! He didn't even give me time to recover. He shot me with another red lightning bolt, and I lost 10 of my hearts. He shot me with another one and another, and I lost more and more hearts. Is this gonna be the end for me? I remembered all the people that Bloody Hero Brian harmed, and I powered through the lightning strikes. Bloody Hero Brian was shocked by this, and I used my blood sword to greatly wound him. This, this can't be. I'm supposed to be the most powerful blood being. Not anymore. I gathered all of my strength and hit Bloody Hero Brian with a sonic boom, killing him once and for all. The storm began to disappear, and the world was safe from Bloody Hero Brian's reign of terror.
On day one, I was assembled as a robot warden. I was in a strange laboratory with a scientist standing before me. My name is Rick. Your humanity's last hope uh, against the robot takeover of this world. Robot takeover? What do you mean? But before he could say anything else, a massive robotic hand smashed into the lab. He started to attack the scientist. Rick, you have no chance of defeating me. The world will soon be mine. The robotic hand turned his attention toward me. Ouch! That hurt! Hurts. I was just a baby, so I only had 10 hearts. I had to run away, or else I'll be defeated. As I started to run, I realized I had something. It was a speed boost. I activated it and was able to make a quick getaway from the robot. There is nowhere you can hide, robot warden. On day two, I escaped the evil robot and found myself in a city. As I looked into the city, I realized that it was also being attacked by other robots. What's up with all these robots? I had to get out of here. I was about to run off. When I suddenly heard a scream, someone was getting attacked. Ah, I can't just leave them. I ran in and used a blaster? Whoa, I have this? It took some time, but I used my weapon and was able to take him down. Nice. Looks like I'm not as weak as I thought. Uh, maybe I was wrong. Time to go. I knew that I wasn't strong enough to take on all these robots, so I ran inside the nearest building. I didn't hear the sound of footsteps, so I think the coast is clear. Man. I turned around and found a group of civilians inside. They were all huddled together and scared. Stay away, you evil robot warden! Evil robot? I'm a good robot. The crowd started chanting for me to leave, so I had no choice but to get out. As I ran away from the city, I could hear a strange beeping sound. I noticed that I was starting to run low on power. Oh, great. I continued traveling until I saw what looked like a laboratory. I didn't know what was inside, but I don't have any other options. I began to search the chests, and I found some batteries. Great. I quickly replaced them, replenishing my energy. Who is there? Is that the robot warden? There was another scientist in the lab. He told me that he worked with Rick, my creator. He then gave me some sad news. If I I was here without Rick, and that must mean he was gone. What? No, that can't be true. Luckily, he was a very intelligent man. He left behind these for you to follow. The scientist dropped me a map that would lead me to one of Rick's old science facilities where I could find more information. He told me to be careful. Robots would be hunting me. That evil hand, Talos, was not far from taking this world over. I thanked him for the information and began to follow the map. I hope I can find what I'm looking for there. On Day four, the map led me to a destroyed laboratory. I have a strange feeling that the robots have something to do with this destruction. I walked inside, and it didn't look good either. There has to be some kind of upgrade inside this place. Something. Suddenly, a person appeared in front of me, and it was Rick? Wait, what? How are you here? I quickly noticed that this wasn't actually him. It must have been some kind of hologram? You are one step closer to stopping Talos. Rick's hologram told me that inside the location, he left me a manual, which would allow me to obtain upgrades that robots had stolen and placed across the world. Additionally, I have left you a very useful mining gadget. The hologram faded away, and I started to search the lab. I found both a manual and a drill? I think I know what he wants me to do with this. I went to the woods nearby and used the drill to collect wood, and then created a hole to quickly grab some stone. Thanks to this drill, I was able to fix up the laboratory and make it look half decent. This drill upgrade is gonna be very useful. On day five, I left my new home and began to follow the manual to find my upgrades. I was looking for some kind of large warehouse. I came across a large building and believed it was the place. I started to search around and was able to find some iron. And yes, an upgrade schematic. I then heard strange noises behind me and turned around to see a bunch of creeper bots coming at me. I started to fight them off using my weapon, but some of them got close enough and exploded. Ah! I was able to avoid most of the damage and take most of them out. I was really starting to feel confident with my new abilities. I knew I would find you here. The robotic hand, Talos, reappeared, and he started to attack me. I tried to fight against him, but he was far too powerful. I had no choice but to flee. Thanks to my speed boost and small size, I was able to lose him fairly easily. I was tired of running away, but I knew I wasn't strong enough to fight back. I needed to obtain whatever upgrade I had just found. Using the manual, I continued towards another structure. It led me into an abandoned facility. I hope this is what I was searching for. As I walked throughout the place, I 
came across a strange machine. The instructions told me to place my schematic on it and get inside. I did just as it told me to. I started to feel strange and heard a lot of mechanical noises before becoming a full-size robot warden. I even had 20 hearts. Now, I just need to keep finding more upgrades to become strong. Ah! Ah! Uh, please, just don't hurt me. I ran into what looked like a robot minion, but he seemed different than the rest. Uh, please, oh gosh, I'm just a tallest color pod. Uh, I don't want to fight. I don't want to fight either, so let's just part ways from here, okay? That way, neither of us cause the other one any trouble. Wait a second. Oh, let me come with you. The robot warden was said to be the savior of this world. I looked at the robot and felt bad for it. You know what? I could really use a friend. Come on, let's go. The bot happily joined me, and we made our way back to the lab. On day seven, I returned back to my base with Ace. He was very appreciative of me. My home, though, was not large enough for both of us. So I went out and collected some materials to build him a base. Together, we were able to create him a house quickly. I then started to ask him some questions about what he knew about Talos. Talos has been trying to take over the world for some time now. Ace told me that Talos had been working on a robot robotic army, making life hard for all living creatures. Man, so everyone's been affected by him? I had to get stronger. I read the upgrade manual, and it told me of another location where I could find an upgrade. I then began my journey toward the location. Do not allow the robot warden to grow any stronger, Kirion, as you wish. On day eight, as I continued looking for the next upgrade, I noticed smoke nearby, and a village was being attacked by a large robot. And the robot looked like some kind of colossal knight. It was chopping down houses and destroying the village. He was about to attack a villager until I yelled for him to stop. The knight turned around and approached me. Uh -huh. You must be the robot warden that Talos told me about. He told me that his name was Killian, and he was made to destroy and crush humanity. Soon, robots will destroy anything non-robotic and overtake this inferior world. No, that's wrong. We weren't made to destroy humans. We're here to help them. Killian asked me to join him and be part of the winning side. He said my abilities were wasted by trying to save these people. No, I'll never join you or Talos. Then you will be destroyed, just like the we began a fight, and he was very powerful. I was able to avoid some of his attacks. I was starting to run low on hearts when Killian slammed his hammer down on the ground and launched me into the air. Ah! On days 9 to 10, I crash landed in a pool of water. Ouch! Ouch! I quickly made my way out, and my body was starting to go haywire. It hurt me a lot, and I tried to use my speed boost again. Ah, uh, I guess I need to travel slowly for now. I continued to walk through the jungle when I began to hear the beeping of my back. Battery. Ugh, I need to replace them again. I did, which was my final battery. Man, okay, I'm gonna have to find more soon. The journal had told me the robots had hidden one of my upgrades inside a desert temple. I eventually made my way out of the jungle and began to cross into the desert. On days 11 to 12, I spotted the large desert temple. I went inside, and another hologram of Rick appeared. It looks like you were able to find the desert lab. I'm proud of you, Fozo. The hologram told me how the world was filled with his creations, like Talos and Killian. Wait, there are more than just those two monsters? This world is filled with danger thanks to Talos. You need to work on finding your upgrades. I looked around the laboratory and found a book with instructions on a new upgrade. I read the book and kept looking around the facility. I was able to find some redstone and combine them with the iron I collected. Thanks to these ingredients, I was able to upgrade my gun into a cannon. It's very powerful, but be warned. It cannot be used often. Sweet! The upgrade book had ended, and I turned to ask Rick more questions, but his hologram was gone. Great. I left the temple and made my way back to the lab. On days 13 to 14, I arrived back at my base. Ace was waiting for me, and I showed him my new upgrades. I also told him about everything that I learned. <laughs> Impressive. You should be much better protected now. I hope so. I started to think about what Rick had told me. His creations? If Rick created them, why would they turn bad? I heard the familiar beeping sound I knew is my energy level. I need to find some batteries fast. I asked the Ace if he had any batteries he could share with me. Unfortunately, I am solar powered. I don't need to consume batteries like you. He then told me that he knew where the creator of the batteries lived. He said he was in a village pretty close to the lab. I think my friend and left to get the batteries. This is where I will construct the tower. How do you know it will work? Soon, I will begin testing my mind control. 
checkpoint now. Find the robot warden. On days 15 to 16, I was heading off toward where the battery creator was. I spotted it, but something looked wrong. The village was in complete ruins. Oh no, the robots must have attacked it and destroyed it. I called out for anyone, but I got no response. Come on, please, someone. I scanned around the village and there was no signs of life. Man, the robots are working very quickly on their takeover. As I continued scanning across the village, I managed to find a battery. Okay, this will hold me off for now. Robot Warden! Have you come to destroy what is left? Run, everyone, run! I told the villager I meant no harm and was just trying to find the battery creator. The villager was very skeptical of what I was saying. He told me that he, in fact, was the creator of the batteries, but refused to tell me where the rest were. Listen, you have to believe me. If you don't give me the batteries, robots will take over the world. I'm trying to stop Talos and his robots. Judging by the fact I hadn't heard him yet, I think he was starting to believe me. He described a large factory that he used to work at and gave me the location. To show my appreciation, I told the villager where my lab was. Thank you, you scary robotic beast. With my home destroyed, I have nowhere left to live. We parted ways and I continued on my journey. On days 17 to 18, I arrived at the large battery factory and began to search it. I needed to find spare batteries or I was not going to last much longer in this world. In one of the chests, I found a bunch of larger batteries. Perfect! I consumed some of them to replenish my power. I was preparing to leave, but I felt like there was so something more here. I found another manual for Rick. This one seemed different though. The manual detailed a very specific set of items needed to create something. A robotic sonic boom. Wow. If I can get this, this will be amazing. Find something you like. It was Killian. What are you doing here? I'm here to destroy you, Robot Warden, while Telos works on his mind control device. Mind control? Before I could respond, Killian was attacking me again. With my new cannon upgrade though, I was able to inflict some serious damage on him. Unfortunately, it had a long cooldown. He was able to keep attacking me while I had to wait for my attack to restart. Oh no, I realized that I was running low on hearts. I was disappointed that I had to retreat again, but I knew I couldn't risk being defeated here. I went off to avoid more conflict. I will find you! I returned to the lab and found Ace was with the villager from earlier. Oh, I'm glad you arrived. Hopefully soon, you'll see that this is a safe place to stay at. I used the cobblestone and wood I had left over and built the villager a new home. There, now you should be nice and safe. Suddenly, there was a growling and the villager didn't look too good. What's wrong with him? Oh, Fozo, he's kind of a human. He needs to eat. Oh, uh, that's right. Humans don't eat like me and Ace. I immediately left the lab and came back with some chickens. I quickly built a pen for them across the villager's house. After that, I decided to talk to Ace about the laser I needed to find. I told him that this would be the key to defeating Talos and stopping the robots. Ace told me that finding the laser will probably be dangerous. What do you need to find your upgrade, Robot Warden? I read the manual and saw I would need to collect unobtainium ore, the ultimate battery, and a karma nuke core. My robotic friend told me he actually knew where I could find the unobtainium ore. It was locked in an underground structure a few days away from where we were. Perfect. I thanked him and headed out. On days 21 to 23, I traveled deep underground into the cave system that Ace told me about. Eventually, I came to a large structure in the cave. I made my way inside and started to look around. I found a strange looking black ore I had never seen before. This must be the unobtainium ore. Before I could mine any of it, I heard noise and a giant scary creature started to attack me. Ah, there's a few of them. I was able to stun them with my cannon. This should give me enough time to run. You creatures will obey my commands. <laughs> On days 24 to 26, I was running back to base. I saw a village was under attack by robotic wolves. I went in the village and used my scanners to figure out what was going on. The wolves were being controlled by Talos, of course. I quickly sprang into action and used my hunter cannon to blow the wolves away from the villagers. The wolves tried to attack and bite me, but it had little effect on my robotic armor. I shot another round of my hunter cannon at the wolves and was able to scare them away. Man, I wonder 
wondered how Talos controlled those wolves. I need to figure that out. And fast. I checked on the villagers to see if they were okay. Scary robotic warden. Why are you helping us? Listen, I don't work with Talos, okay? He is a monster and must be stopped. The villagers seemed to not quite believe me, but told me I could prove it wrong by finding the missing villagers. I used my scanner to find any tracks left and found a trail leading out of the village. All right, fine. I'll go rescue the captives. On days 27 to 29, I continued to follow the tracks to what appeared to be an outpost in the nearby forest. I could see villagers were in cages. Kill! Robot warden! Kill! Kill! Wolves began pouring out of the outpost from all directions and started to attack me. I told them to disobey the orders, but it was no use. As much as I wanted to help them, I couldn't risk being taken out now. I fought off against the wolves. Their numbers gave me some serious issues, but I was able to overcome all of them and take them out. I freed the villagers and then began to search the outpost for anything useful. In one of the chests, I found a laser sword. Whoa, this will definitely give me a boost in my attack. The villagers thanked me for freeing them and told me that their home was destroyed. I offered them a place to stay at my base and the villagers agreed, seeing I had their best interest in mind. I returned to the lab with the freed villagers. Together, Ace and I built a few houses for our new friends to live inside of. I knew the villagers were going to need some more food, so I built them a farm. They seemed really happy that I was around, and I was glad that they viewed me as a friend. Hopefully when this is all over, robots and humans can live in peace together. Were you able to acquire the Unobtainium? The guardians were too powerful, but I found this. I showed Ace my laser sword, and he was amazed by my new upgrade. Oh wow, I've never seen this this type of sword before. This is sick. Me neither. I think with this though, I might be able to defeat the temple guardians. I set off to retrieve the unobtainium. On days 33 to 35, I traveled back to the underground structure and was ready to take on the guardians. I called out for them and in a mass, they began to rush at me. I used my new laser sword and quickly cut through one of them. Wow, this sword is super powerful. There were a lot of them though and I had to use everything I had. I blasted the final one of my cannon, taking it down. As I defeated them, I'd gain another 10 hearts. Hey, look at that. I have 30 now. I spotted the ore and used my drill tool to mine as much of it as I could. After I was finished, I searched the temple for any other items that could be inside of it. Hey, look at that. I found some iron and three diamonds. I wasn't sure what to craft though with the diamonds, so I held on to them for now. With the iron, I was able to create a full set of armor. Look at that. I'm proud of how much I've done in the last few days. I was feeling stronger than ever. On days 36 to 38, I left the temple, and standing before me was Killian. What are you doing? I came to destroy this temple, but it looks like you beat me to it. He asked me if I've encountered any new creatures recently. I knew that he was talking about those brainwashed wolves. Talos is trying to brainwash everyone, and you're just okay with that? Yes. What better way to control the world than control the people? You and Talos won't have your way. I charged at Killian and sliced him with my laser sword. He reeled back from the damage, and I knew that my recent upgrades gave me a fighting chance. Kilion then hit me, and it took some of my hearts away. I shot Kilion with my hunter cannon. This was my chance, but he pulled out a device, and it weakened me. Ugh, my systems were failing. Uh, is this some kind of EMP? That's right. Enjoy your rest, robot warden. Oh no, I'm shutting down. On days 39 to 41, I woke up in a strange place. Where am I? I was in some kind of prison cell, and I noticed that all of my items were gone from my inventory. Is anyone here? Foolish robot warden, do you really think you could stop me? The robotic hand was right in front of me. Talos isn't too late to stop. Please, just stop. Talos told me he would never stop. He then said that he was originally created by another scientist to help humanity, and that scientist was Rick. Soon, I realized that the people of this world would not manage themselves. He explained that he had watched so much destruction caused from the war between players. So much time wasted, so many valuables stripped from caves, taking away everything from this world they were in. He had enough. 
It is up to us to protect this world. Join me. You do not need to die for them. And what? Just kill every single person in the world? You're insane. Talos told me that I will stay here until I am dismantled. He then walked away, leaving me in the cell alone. Uh, my system's turned on, and Ace was standing outside of my cell. Ace, what are you doing here? He told me that since I didn't return home, he had a bad feeling that I'd been caught. Oh, thank goodness. It's great to see you. Can you get me out of here? Of course, Robot Warden. Uh, just take a step back from me, will ya? Thank you so much. Look at that. Now you're free to go. Let's get out of here together, friend. Not without my equipment first, Ace. We snuck around the lair and found all my weapons and armor inside of it. Nice. I also found a rocket launcher upgrade for my cannon. This is going to make my cannon that much stronger. We continued looking around and found an area that contained the Karmic Nuke Core. There it is, Ace. If we get that, Talos is finished. Is that right? We turned around and saw Talos towering over us. Uh, I think it's time to run. Yeah, it is. Talos chases down, shooting his laser at us. We were able to dodge them, and I used my new rocket launcher to blast open an exit. As we got close to the exit, Talos got me with a laser. Ah! Go on without me, Ace. I'll hold them off. Are you crazy? You're a robot warden. He didn't listen to me and forced my systems to leave the lair prison without him. Ace, what are you doing? I'm making sure that you save the world, Bozo. Please do it for me, friend. All I could do was helplessly watch and run away as Talos destroyed my friend. No! On days 45 to 47, I made it back to base. Man, he's gone. Ace is really gone. He sacrificed himself so I could escape. And he was the only one that believed in me. How am I going to be able to continue on without him? I looked around at all the villagers at my base. I can't give up on them now. I just can't. I decided to start working on it. I expanded it to give myself more room and was really starting to feel a little better. I had to remain strong for Ace. If he believed in me, I couldn't let my best friend die in vain. I knew where that nuke core was, but I needed to find the ultimate battery. I read about its location and then headed off toward it. Kilion, I have an important task for you. Anything you wish. Find the device to amplify the signal. I traveled through a thick forest on my search for the ultimate battery. I realized I was approaching the center. As I walked through the forest, my scanners indicated that it was full of mind-controlled creatures. I wanted to save them, so it felt wrong to fight these creatures now. I decided it was best to avoid them and continue toward the battery. I journeyed deeper into the forest and then came across an abandoned factory. The factory must have been very old because it was covered in vines. I went into the factory and scanned the area in search of the the battery. My readings didn't indicate any tracings, though. This has to mean one thing. This wasn't a factory where the ultimate battery was. This is the factory where it was created. I walked throughout it and eventually found instructions on how they created the battery. I was gonna need to collect a lot of redstone. I left the forest and headed toward a nearby cave. Inside the cave, I was able to find a bunch of redstone. I collected it and then spotted some diamonds inside as well. I used the diamonds to craft myself a chest plate and then headed back toward the factory. On days 51 to 53, I arrived back at the factory and read the instructions for the battery one last time. I applied the redstone to power the machine. Everything was still overgrown, so I tried to remove the vines. As I broke one, I heard a massive rumbling from behind me, and a large plant sprouted out from the floor. Another robot here to restart the factory? The plant prepared a fight, but I stopped it. Wait, wait, I'm trying to put an end to this entire robotic takeover. I explained to the plant why I was here and what I needed from the factory. I just want the battery. I'm not sure if I can believe you. I have been deceived by many in the past. I swear. I need the battery so I can put an end to the robotic monster, Talos. I need you to trust me. The plant looked at me and said it can sense I was more alive than all the other robots. Do not fail us, robot warden. The plant retreated back into the ground and removed its vines from the machine. I turned the machine on and the ultimate battery was created. I'm one 
step closer to obtaining the warden laser and putting an end to all of this. I returned to base and quickly went to my home. I used some of my spare wood to craft a chest and stash the unobtainium, as well as the ultimate battery. I couldn't let something like this fall into the wrong hands. As I walked out of my house, more villagers entered. I asked them how they found this place, and they told me that word spread that apparently this place was safe from evil robots. Well, you heard it right. You guys can stay here as long as you guys like. The villagers all seemed very eager to share their homes with the new residents. As I watched the villager walk away, I realized I couldn't let anything happen to these people, and they're all I have left with Rick and Ace gone. I owed it to them more than anyone else in this world to defeat Talos and his army. I headed to rest for the night. You live to serve me now. Yeah, what is your thing? There is a warden that must be destroyed. On days 57 and 59, I was woken up to the sounds of chaos at my base. What was going on out there? Ace? What are you doing? Destroy Bozo! I begged for him to talk with me, but it was obvious that he was not willing to listen. What has Talos done to my friend? He was destroying my base and was about to attack the villagers when I started to fight back. I hit him with my new rocket upgrade and then began to fight against him with the laser blade. I was quickly starting to overpower him. I don't want to do this! Please, listen to me! Destroy Bozo! Save the world, Bozo! Please, do it for me, friend! I can't defeat him! I have to save him! In my hesitation, Ace had run off and escaped. Oh, I'll fix you, buddy. Just you wait. Ah, there it is! Dallos will be very pleased with me. I began to repair all the damages that Ace had caused. I never imagined my friend could do something like that. It took a while, but I eventually was able to repair my own house and all of the villagers' houses. I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to save Ace, but I had to focus on the laser for right now. I turned to the villagers and tried to see if any of them had information on a way I could slow the robots down. One of the villagers shared the location of a factory he believed might be where some of the robot minions were being created. Since this was my only lead, I headed off that way. I arrived at the factory and was attacked by robotic mech suits. They packed a punch, but I was able to take most of them down. I found something strange. It looked like a schematic for Ace. There were coordinates on it as well. Oh man. I went off and exploded the factory before heading off toward the coordinates on the schematic. On day 63 to 65, I went through the world trying to find the coordinates on the schematic. As I reached the coordinates, I spotted a strange old laboratory. What is this place? Something felt strange. Hello, Fozo. I'm glad you were able to find this. There was another transmission from Rick. What is this place? Why did Ace's schematic have this location on it? He told me he created Ace as one of his first prototypes. Like Talos, he was created for good. Talos has obviously changed who Ace is, but he is not lost. But how can I save him? What can I do? Rick said that unlike Talos, he was going to be able to be reprogrammed much easier. There is a debug tool that will be able to fix him. You must craft it. Rick gave me the recipe to make the tool and then said he would speak to me one last time before fading away. I have to go and get these materials quickly. As I made my way to the cave, I noticed that the world was more robotic. Some more of Talos's robot animals were lurking around. I did my best to avoid them and continued to travel. Talos was getting closer to taking over. I went inside the cave and hoped it had enough of the materials I needed to create the debug tool. Using my drill, I collected a large amount of redstone and then began to look for the strange platinum ore. I was able to find some along with diamonds deeper in the cave. Using the diamonds I collected, I crafted myself a diamond armor set. Nice. I should be much more protected now. Now I can finally go and save Ace. Suddenly, I picked up a distress signal not far from me. Oh, I wanted to go save my friend, but I knew he would never forgive me if I ignored a cry for help. I went off and made my way towards the distress signal. Don't worry, Ace. I'll save you soon. On day 69 to 71, I continued to follow the distress signal. I had everything I needed for the debug tool, but I needed to find out what was going on. I entered a strange area and began to look around. What was going on with this place? So, you have fallen into my trap! 
It was Killian, and he emerged with a group of robotic wolves. They rushed at me, but stood no chance of all my new upgrades. You will never win while I'm still standing. The robotic knight rushed at me and slammed the ground with his hammer. I was ready, though, and able to avoid the attack. With my rocket launcher, I was able to hurt him a lot. I could tell Killian was growing angry, and he was able to land a few hits on me. But with my diamond armor, it wasn't very effective. I had to take him out. Now, this is my chance. I rushed Shannon with my laser sword and began to hit him rapidly. She was defeated and exploded in a large ball of electricity. Now, all that was left was the free ace and take Talos out. Rise, my robotic army. Rise and take over the world. On day 72 to 74, while I was traveling back to base, a strange radio wave passed my body. I didn't know what that was, but I had a hunch that Talos had something to do with it. After my systems readjusted, I realized that a nearby area was under attack from more robots. I went over and saw a city completely overrun. All the villagers had a strange helmet on too. This must have been the aftermath of that radio wave. The city was completely under Talos' control. I scanned the area and found people surrounded by robotic spiders and used my rocket launcher to destroy them. But more of them were emerging. I asked the citizens to come with me, but one stopped and said, I want to serve Talos. These people were being controlled too. I couldn't fight them, so I had no choice but to leave. Is this the kind of world that you want, Talos? A world that only serves you? If I didn't stop him, I knew that this would be the outcome. I made it back to base and quickly went inside my lab to create the debug tool. The debug tool was finally made and I used my scanners to track down Ace. Once I freed him, I planned to free everyone under his control. On days 75 to 77, I began to search for Ace. I was able to track him thanks to the debug tool. I noticed Ace was destroying buildings and attacking villagers. Ace! Stop! This isn't you! Uh, destroy humanity! He started a fight with me! Please, stop! Try to control yourself! I prepared the debug tool, but he kept attacking! Fight against it! You're better than this! I could see Ace stop for a second, and his eyes changed from red back to the normal color. What is happening? It was my chance! I used the debug tool on him, and he powered down for a second before returning to his normal self. Uh I uh, attacked those people. Oh, I'm a monster, Fozo. I'm a monster. No, no, no. You're, you're not, okay? That was Talos. He was controlling you. That wasn't really you. We need to focus our anger and attention on him and use this to stop him. Ace told me to follow him. We were going to need to get that nuke core from Talos' base. And then I would be able to defeat him once and for all. Right behind you, buddy. On day 78 to 80, we landed on the outskirts of Talos' lair. There were robot guards blocking our way inside. We knew that the best thing to do was to sneak inside. Ace had a plan and used a distress signal to lure the guards away from the entrance. Nice. We quietly made our way inside the lair and I followed Ace to the nuke core. As we headed for the core, we passed a larger tower and I stopped to scan it. My scanners indicated that the tower was a beacon for Talos' mind control. We needed to find that nuke core and fast. We made it to a room and found the nuke core. I quickly grabbed it and we prepared to leave. Oh, good. Now we can finally leave this stupid little Dumb. What are you doing here? Whatever you think you're making will have no effect on my mind control. Ah, oh, jeez. I spoke too soon again, didn't I? Talos was behind us, so I had no choice but to fight our way out. I used my laser sword to try and slice him, but it had no effect. Talos tried to blast Ace, but I shielded him using my body. Not again. I won't let you take him. I fired my rocket launchers at Talos, but it was only moderately effective on him. I can't beat him without my sonic boom. So Ace and I quickly ran out of the lair and flew off. On days 81 to 85, we arrived back at base with everything we needed to construct my sonic boom. We're almost done, Ace. The world is gonna make it, thanks to us. No, you silly robot. Thanks to you. He told me that everyone here believed in me. You know, Rick would be proud of you. The villagers came out and told me that they were so thankful that I showed compassion to protect them. They worried that Talos is gonna win before I showed up. Well, I have one last thing I have to do. I went inside the lab and tried to construct the sonic boom. But something was wrong. Am I missing something? Oh, no. Activate the tower. 
Suddenly, there was a flash of light that covered the entire world. My systems automatically readjusted, and everyone in the village was completely under Talos's mind control. I am Talos. Ace, we need to get out of here right now. Ace tried to attack me, and I quickly dodged him. Ace, not you too. All hail Talos again. I had no choice but to run off and leave them. I had to find somewhere safe. I went over a small village to see if Talos reached this place. My fears were right. Talos had now the entire world under his control. I tried to think if there's anywhere I could be safe, and I realized there might be one last spot. On days 91 and 94, I returned back to where I'd been created. As I entered the destroyed laboratory, Rick popped up again. Pozo, I'm happy you've made it this far. I failed, Rick. Talos has now taken over everything, and the sonic boom didn't even work. You have not failed. You are merely missing something I had to hide. Rick pointed toward a wall, and I broke it, revealing a chest. Inside the chest was an overclocker? What is this for? He told me that this was the final piece for the sonic boom. He had to hide it and leave it out of the instructions in case Talos found the manual before us. Now you have everything you need. This will be the last time we speak. Rick, wait! I can't do this without you! You are the robot warden, the bridge between humanity and the robots. Be the savior this world needs, Fozo. He faded away. Be the savior. I crafted the sonic boom and tested it out. It was a vibrant red color too! Now, all that is left is to defeat Talos and save everyone. I landed in front of the entrance to Talos' lair, and the guards are there waiting for me. I used my rocket launcher to blow one of the guards away. The other guards try to shoot me, but I dodged his attacks, and finish him off with my laser sword. I made my way to the tower, and Talos was waiting for me with Ace. If you want to get to me, you have to fight your friend first. Fight this, Ace! I know you don't want to do this! All who oppose Talos must be destroyed! Ace rushed me, but I dodged his attack! I don't want to fight you! He continued his onslaught and blasted me onto the ground! What are you going to do, Fozo? Will you fight your friend to save the world? Ah, I was so angry! All I want is my friend back! He continued to attack, and I realized there's no use. I charged my sonic boom. Stop now! He didn't listen, and I was about to hit him. At the last second, I had an idea and redirected the laser at the tower. The sonic boom connected with it and destroyed the signal. No! Ace stopped trying to attack, and I knew that he and everyone else were no longer under Talos' control. Talos rushed at me, and I was prepared, but he flew past me and quickly left the area. I went off after him. I won't let you go that easily. On day 100, I followed Talos to a mount and used my rocket launcher to knock him down to the ground. He crashed and landed at the top of a mountain. There's still a chance for you to right your wrongs, Talos. Give up now and live to help humanity, not destroy it. I will never give up. As long as I live, I will make sure that robots will rule this world. Then I guess we have no choice but to finish this once and for all. Talos fired his eye laser at me and I quickly dodged his attack. I used my laser sword to try and stab him, but he turned into a fist and punched me away. Ah, you pesky robot warden, you will die here. Talos charged up for another punch, but I waited until the last second to dodge. I knew that he would need time to charge, so I took advantage of the opportunity to use my sonic boom right on him, and he exploded right in front of me. Talos was finally defeated. Hopefully with him gone, humans and robots can now live in peace.